Today was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. It actually kind of sunk in. It's first time, first time it was like really for real, you know. Uh, before it's, it's, it was a lot of behind the scenes. Now today it was put everything together and you got you to gotta display uh, what the guys have been working on. So I uh, was really, uh, really pleased with uh, the attendance at the Wahoo Walk. Uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, just the excitement, the energy coming into the uh, coming into the uh, into the stadium. I think the guys really really liked that. I saw some smiles. Uh, they were excited. I uh, just proud overall of the effort. Uh, there was a lot of guys that played a lot of snaps all spring, not just today. You're talking about eight nine offensive linemen, but they never complained. Uh, they just worked. Uh, I'm proud of Bre I'm proud of Brendan. You know, is is he made a decision to come back, and and then you know some of his guy some of his buddies decided not to come back. But he still he still stuck with it, and you know he had to do the best that he could. And and I saw him just lead, uh, lead and grow as a leader, um, and challenge himself to get better uh, in the little things. So there's a lot there's a lot to be proud of. Uh, overall, I was I was pleased with the just the, the the organization. That was probably the biggest thing that I lost sleep over. When you split the teams up, and you got special teams and guys on all different special teams. You got guys running from sideline to sideline, putting pennies on to play for the other teams. There were a lot of moving parts, and 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 for the most part, up there up until the end, it was a really clean game. Uh, I thought the guys took took pride uh, in what I challenged them for. And so for me today was just looking at the the little things. Do I see the little things? As I said before, from a program standpoint, uh, with the uh, with the effort, and I thought the effort was solid. Uh, there were times. Where, where I had to get on a couple guys, but that's to be said. Uh, and I told them at halftime, I wanted to see who was going to strain because today the weather was up. There was a lot of snaps. It was competitive. Coaches were off the field. There's a lot of moving parts, a lot of distractions. Uh, so, so I thought overall that just with the operation, uh, it, went, uh, it went about as good as it, as it could have considering the first time and everybody being split up. Tony, you uh, there weren't a lot of holes, at least in the first half, to run through, but yeah. You remained committed to the run. Was that the intent coming in that no matter how it was going, you were going to keep keep Definitely. plugging? It's a mindset. You know, as I've said, we want to we want to be balanced, and and for us, it's not just statistically balanced. It's a it's a mindset, and I thought that uh, I thought the the the, the schemes uh, were a little bit tougher to run. Uh, the inside zone, um, especially when your quarterback's not able to to neutralize that defensive end uh, with the with the pull, and and obviously we weren't asking Brandon to do a ton of that, so. Early on, I wanted to see the backs uh, compete, and and I thought there were a couple situations that the offensive line did good enough just to get them to a one on one, and and we didn't win those one on ones in the first half. So that'll be a great opportunity for us to go back and challenge those guys, and that's what running the football being effective is. Uh, a, a great running back, he makes the offensive line right, uh, and 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 I think these guys are capable. They just got to develop that mindset that I don't care how it's blocked, I'm going to get four yards. That's my mindset, and so we wanted to force that, and you know proud of Paris. You know, Paris was a guy that had a hamstring and was out for a while and we didn't know if he was going to get back in time. And, and then we started doing some, some more outside zone where, where there's, a, there's usually a little bit more risk reward. Uh, the reward being that, that, that people are moving and, and it was later, yeah, later in the game and you had some backups in there, but there was some creases. I thought he ran the ball uh, pretty good. Then we got to some counter scheme, which, uh, which helps a little bit. Uh, but some of the, some of the stuff in the first half was more a, hey, let's just go try to force the issue and, 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 and start developing or, or just uh, continue to, to push that mindset of, of running the football. Tony, last time we saw Brennan and, and the offense, mm -hmm. it was aired out, a lot of big yep. play deep balls. I know today you were focusing on the run game, and obviously mm -hmm. the line is a, a work in progress. But do you feel like that part of the offense is still there, and, and is it coming along the way you want? You know, with, with, with what Rudd was doing you know, on defense, there weren't as many shots down the field just because they were sitting back there at eight yards, and it's hard to, hard to run by him. So we were going to take what, uh, what he was going to give us. I, I think that'll definitely be there you know, as we get into fall camp. And, and, and really this offseason, you know, that's where you develop your timing because these guys are going to have uh, a lot of coordinated workouts uh, on their own uh, where they're going to go out and throw, and then they're going to do some, some team-related stuff without the coaches. Uh, uh, and then we've actually the NCAA double A's will give us two hours a week to be able to do some skill work. So we'll be able to work on that timing. Um, so I'm not I'm not worried about that piece of it. Uh, more so for us, the focus was let's establish the run game and we'll be able to to push the ball down the field. And and, and I think with what we do offensively with the with the the play action and the move the pocket, the play pass stuff, it won't necessarily have to just be your traditional throw the fade down the down the field. We'll be able to to move some people, distort some safeties, uh, and be able to throw throw the ball. You know, not necessarily. 40 yards in the air, but we can put it 20, and then they can run it 20, which is the, which is the same thing.
Tony, in the first half, or well, first series, you had a pass breakup on third and goal in, in the end zone. Then a few series later, you get a pick off Brennan on, on a deflection. Seemed to be very few missed tackles in the first half. How would you evaluate not only your, your first front line defense today, but throughout the spring? Yeah, I thought they were in a good position uh, for the most part. Um, there were, there were, the tight ends had a really good day, so we got some work there. Uh, I thought on the outside we were in position, probably a little bit better than some of the, some of the seam action uh, where, the, uh, where the big plays were coming from. But, you know, overall, those guys have, like I said from the beginning, their, their confidence has come back uh, for the most part. Uh, they weren't at full strength because everybody was split up, but it was good to just see those guys, uh, those guys go compete. So I thought they were in good position. Uh, I thought that, that Brendan took a chance right there. Uh, on that one pick, you know, we tried to force that ball because uh, Clay was underneath it. Uh, that led to the led to the tip, and then uh, I was proud of the white team, and and I was trying to encourage them. But yeah, the, you gave up a, a a drive down to the eight, but man, you held. You know, you held for three points. I mean, that's a that's a victory. You know, you got to celebrate the little victories, and so I was proud of that uh, that sequence there. Um, I thought Brennan uh, looked good overall, but there was a couple passes that I thought that uh, that he missed target. And you could see playing with different receivers than, than what he's had all uh, all uh, up until this point. When you split the teams up, there was uh, there was a little bit of uh, some some miscommunication, some timing uh, from that standpoint. But how about them young bucks? Some young bucks just got in there and threw it up, huh? They threw it up, and uh, and a couple guys made some plays. So I was uh, I was encouraged to see that. And just kind of following up on that question too, the DBs flashed a lot this today. And what, how would you evaluate the secondary? You know, Cohen King had a couple of pass breakups today. You know, Cohen King is a guy that that uh, that I challenged uh, a couple of practices ago to tell him that hey, we need you need to step up and, and you need to push yourself. And Clary was another one uh, that, that I because again, right now with in the situation that we're in, there's depth, but there's we're playing with three safeties. You know, so it might not be you know competitive depth all the way through. And so those those front line guys got to push themselves. You know, a little bit harder uh, if somebody's not behind him to, to push. But I thought Cohen made strides uh, this uh, this spring. Uh, Lex Long is is, is a guy that uh, looks like he's becoming more comfortable. I heard him all day getting guys lined up, uh, communicating. So so with what with uh, they've really taken to, to Coach Cox and Coach Rudd just uh, understanding the scheme and the flexibility with the safeties being able to play multiple spots. So that's a group right there. With with ex they got a little bit of experience, but more so they got some some age on them. Uh, that that could uh, that could lead us. So that group right there, the wideouts are really going to have to emerge and lead until until we can get some more guys in the trenches to to step up. Darius Bratton, you mentioned him before. Yeah. He didn't play today. Mm -hmm. What's his um, he'll be future look like. Yeah, he'll be he'll be good to go and back with us by the time we start um, in the uh, when they come back from the summer. So when they get here in uh, in, in late May, uh, early June, he should be turned loose to uh, to rock and roll. And there were a couple of practices when we didn't have the pads on that he was able to get in there and, and move around a little bit. So I'm excited to uh, to see uh, where he is when he gets back. And the same thing, you know, Jonas may be a little bit further along. I mean, further behind. We might not get him. Till right till we start camp, but uh, I'm anticipating that once we get ready in, in fall camp, both of those guys will be good to go. Sonny, when you walked in, you said it kind of sunk in a little bit, right? You're probably as had as much information now as you as you are going to have at least you know for a little while here, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just curious, taken back to to when spring started, even before that, where do you feel like you are? Did you get what you needed out of the spring? Did, what did you what did you maybe didn't get that you wanted to get? Where do you feel like you are right now? You know, I I feel like um. About where I expected, uh, I, I thought that majority of the guys were going to, to to buy in, but I was still going to have a couple that were were, were skeptical and kind of one foot in the water, and I got a couple of those, and and really that was my last message to the guys just now is, hey, we're getting ready, the coaches getting ready to go on the road. This is about to be discretionary time. We got to finish academically, and then we got to come back, and it's on you guys to become a team, and really just challenging those guys that have one foot in the water to just jump on in. So, so I'm about where I where I thought I, I'm. I'm actually pleased offensive line wise. You know, I was to to be able to do what we did today, considering uh, what we had to do to get here, uh, and for those guys to to be able to push through, and for Leach to to take to make the progress, for Patterson to make the progress, for for Josie to get all those reps and Justice Justice to get all those reps. Uh, I think it's gonna it's gonna help us. So I'm actually actually encouraged with where we are from an offensive line st uh, standpoint. And then we just got to get a couple of these guys to come in here and, uh, and help us. You know, running back, about what I thought, uh, we got we to take another step there. You know, wide out, it's there. 
uh, but I think it's 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 a different approach. And and my style of coaching wide receiver uh, is how I was trained. And you coach those guys hard. And uh, and Hagen's coaches them hard. But there's a lot more accountability uh, from a, from a program standpoint with those guys. And uh, and 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 I really got to see a couple of those guys emerge. Uh, if I can get a couple of those guys to just fully get in the water, they got both feet in the water. Sometimes they'll they'll, they'll get waist deep, but then they'll go they'll go right back up on the step. So pushing those guys, D line, I tell you, I'm 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 pleased with where the D line has progressed to uh, to see where Smiley is, considering uh, where uh, where he started. Uh, Famui uh, being more consistent and and wanting to lead uh, compared to to when I first showed up here, uh, he was a guy that was 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 one foot in. Now I think he's got both feet in the water. Uh, Diata, uh, I think that he's got a chance to, to help us. Chico uh, was pleased with the spring that Chico had. You know, Mike Green is another one that I'm trying to get both feet in the water because he's as talented of, a, of, a, of, a, of an athlete that we have on this, uh, on this football team. So a oh, linebacker and the linebackers are solid. You know, the linebackers have done a, have done a good job. So, so overall, from a foundation standpoint, you know, I'm, 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 I'm about where we thought we would be. But I also knew going in that we were going to have to make a huge, huge improvement between now and fall camp with the uh, with the roster management. So we're going to take questions from Mike, Damon, and mm -hmm. Nathan, and then we're going to let Coach go to do some live rounds for about 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. We'll start bringing players. Tony, you've mentioned a few times, you know, your passion for the receiver position, mm -hmm. affinity for coaching those guys. Uh, two guys specifically, Dontavian Wicks, um, can you evaluate his spring, where he's at, what you like and what he needs to do? And then the same for Lavelle. And where is Lavelle physically? Because right. he looks like maybe not quite all the way there. Correct. You know, uh, Tay, and I've told him this, I mean, he, he, he's as good as the guys that, that, that I've been around for the, for the last 11 years from a talent standpoint. I mean, he can do it all. He's got the speed. You know, he's got the short area quickness. Uh, he's got the natural hands. Uh, he's a tough guy. Uh, so he's, he's, got, he's got it all. You know, the biggest thing with him is he was a guy that was one foot in, in the water because he's had success. And, and he knows he's, you know, he's, the, he's the best one returning. And, and for me, my coaching style is I'm going at the best one. And I'm coaching the best one harder than anybody else. Because in order for us to be the team that we want to be, the best players got to be the hardest workers. They got to lead every single day. And at first, there was a little bit of resistance, but I'm proud of how he's responded. And I've seen that every every area of his life is, is improved. And, and just in terms of his commitment and engagement in the classroom has improved. Uh, he's trying to, to, to lead. You know, his body language is, is, is a lot better uh, from when we first started. So so I'm pleased with his, with his spring, but I think he still has another step that he can take uh, because he has a chance to be as, as good as the ones that, uh, that I've been around for the last 11 years, just from a talent standpoint. But he's got to make that commitment that he wants to be the best at everything that he does every single time he steps on the field. And then Lavelle, you know, Lavelle's got the want to. Uh, he's got the passion. He's got the desire. Uh, I think he's, you know, probably about, if I had to put a number on it, I think he's up there in that 85 to 90 percent. Just and, and it's probably more mental than it is everything, and he's trying to battle that. But you know the knee, you know that's a that's a tough that's a tough one, and, and everybody responds uh, differently. But this off season will be good for him because he'll be able to get in the weight room and, and really really strengthen all the areas around that knee to have complete uh, complete confidence, and then he'll have opportunity to to get out there with Brandon and really continue to work on his timing uh, day in and day out. So I anticipate by the time we get ready to roll, uh, barring any issues uh, this uh, this off season, by the time we get ready to roll for fall camp he'll be back up to 100 percent and i and wicks you know wicks is a guy i mean not wicks but um i get him and starling all the time i confuse those two because they're always together but damique you know you see what damique can do you know damique's probably uh the fastest of the guys that we got he can run he's tough uh body catcher a little bit right now so we got to work on his uh just on his confidence and consistency using his hands but man he's tough uh, he's got a he's got a, he's got an edge to him, you know, which I which I like. We just got to polish him up, and I, and I think we polish him up, and and we continue to 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 get eight to progress fields. Uh, he was a guy that that really came on early in the spring, and I think the youth showed a little bit as the spring wore on, a little bit longer spring. Um, you know, he kind of fizzled a little bit, but it was good to see him uh, make a play there to give him some confidence. But uh, he's a guy that's that's got a ton of ability uh, that can really help us. So uh, there's a ton of there's a ton of potential. There's a ton of talent in that room. Uh, I'm just. Uh, that's going to be the group, and I've already told them, won't be the hardest on you guys uh, just because you got a chance. And that position there is all about confidence, and, and it's all about, and your confidence is built through consistency day in and day out. To continue with your, um, your pool 
and algae. Has Brennan been one of those two feet in the pool guys all spring? And I guess, where have you seen the most progress in year five for him, spring five as a quarterback this spring? Yeah, he's been he's been two feet in since the beginning. Uh, before we even started uh, practice, he would come in on his own and watch film, and he was eager to get uh, the installation. He was eager to get the formations to start learning the concepts. And where I've seen him progress is, you know, Brennan is a is an instinctual player. Uh, we know that. Uh, and, and last year he played, you know, off a lot of instincts and just feel. Uh, I think he's become a little bit more detail oriented and in, in understanding uh, progression reads, leverage reads, uh, management of the game is, is an area where I'm really challenging him to grow. Um, leadership, uh, he's a guy that, that he's got fire to him, but he a lot of times likes to keep that fire to himself. I'm starting to see him transition that to, you know, them great quarterbacks, but they, they talk to their guys. They talk to their guys, and everyone has a different approach in how they talk to their guys. But I'm seeing him, you know, start to talk more to his guys and communicate to really, really, really uh, strengthen the relationship between him and his uh, and his skill guys. And Tony, I want to ask you about um, one of those defensive linemen. You said that you really liked what that group has. Uh, ben Smiley is a guy who's, uh, you know, kind of in his in his third year, and he's kind of how do you how did you see him progress through the spring and what kind of impact can can he have on the defensive line moving forward I think that he's a guy that's probably the most versatile of all the D linemen he could play out as a five technique and 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 he's powerful enough and he's got enough speed and he can transition speed to power to, to put some pressure on the tackles but then he's also got the ability uh, to, to go inside and he's strong enough physical enough to go inside and and, uh, and be like a Jonathan Allen not saying he's Jonathan Allen but when I remember getting ready for Jonathan Allen you'd see him at five technique and then on third down, he went in there on third uh, on a three technique, and then they isolated the nose and got the guard one on one, and it, and it wasn't even a, it wasn't even a chance. So he's got that kind of uh, flexibility and 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 versatility, and he's another one that uh, was a guy that kind of was one foot in. And then once I saw him jump in, again, everything in his life improved, man, just his, his engagement. Uh, and it shows out in practice. I mean, it, I don't know if you guys were able to tell it, but he was disruptive, man. He was always around pushing pushing the pocket, uh, getting close to that quarterback, uh, you know, had a couple of TFLs, you know, getting in the backfield. So so definitely proud of uh, of, uh, of Smiley. And he was one that uh, that I challenged, and, and, uh, and he had to make a decision. And the decision was you're either fully going to commit or it's, you're not going to make it because it's going to be too hard and I'm not going to relent, right? Because you got too much ability, you got too much potential, uh, and I want to pull it out of you. But you can't resist, right? You got you to trust the process. And once he started trusting the process, everything about him uh, improved. Great, thanks. Uh, we'll have Jameer Parker just